Welcome to episode 2 of Making a Game Nobody Will Play. In this episode, we're going to talk about artwork, an aspect of your game which can potentially make or break its success. In video game parlance, artwork is commonly referred to as graphics and includes anything in your game that is visually represented on the screen. So menus, title screens, in-game maps and environments, in-game characters, and any other visual effect or animations that you can think of. Basically, if you can see it, it means you as the game developer must find a way to put it on the screen. This whole graphics thing may seem like a side concern to you at first. After all, you've got this great and epic game idea, which everyone is just going to love, and graphics is an easy piece to tack on later after you get all of the story and the mechanics out of the way. Right? Well, probably not. As it turns out, most indie game developers making a game on their own fit into one of two categories, coders or designers. Research, which I have not done and may not even be true, in fact shows that the majority of those who embark on indie game development projects fit into the coder category, not the designer one. So while they can learn the game engines, bang bits and make things actually work, the downside is that in the early stages of development, you're dealing with game prototypes which work really well but look like a proverbial bag of poop. A wide chasm between vision versus reality gradually evolves, revealing that the game you had originally imagined would look something like this, actually ends up looking more like this. It is around this point in the process, and on facing this realisation, that a large percentage of developers pretty much decide to just give up. For the rest of us too stubborn, this is the time when we must make one of two decisions. Make the graphics yourself, or find somebody competent to do it. Let's break these two choices down and see what each has to offer. For the first option, you could learn to create the graphics yourself. On the surface, this seems like a pretty solid idea. It'll save you a lot of money up front, you don't have to talk to anybody else, and it will absolutely ensure that you produce artwork that matches your original vision. There is no need to deal with the hassle of other designers misinterpreting your genius and visual direction, or the logistical complications of working around somebody else's time and availability. Also, going back to the money again, this is the only possible option for a lot of indie developers, thanks to being totally broke, and thanks to most professional game artists' sheer unwillingness to accept the payment for their work in the form of ramen noodles, or in the offer of a future share of the massive profits that you're going to make when this game hits the big time. So, unfazed and possibly even enthusiastically, you can download a copy of GIMP and toil for days and days trying to make graphics until you finally realise that being a digital artist is a real skill. Granted, you may by this point have managed to turn your earlier efforts into some notable improvement, but it's hard not to admit to yourself that it's simply just not going to cut it. This leads unavoidably to the second available option, which is to pay a professional artist fair price for the artistic production that you require. This can be broken into various sub-options depending essentially on how you plan to pay for the work, with acceptable options being akin to the well-understood economy of hitchhikers, i.e. gas, grass or ass. Alas, being generally hundreds or thousands of miles away, most artists are not actually interested in any of these three forms of currency, so even though you may have a nice ass to offer, you're going to have to pay instead in real American dollars. Sure, you're completely broke and can't afford it, but knowing just how much money you're going to make once your game is launched and hits the big time, you decide to follow the classic adage that you must speculate to accumulate and head forth into the wonderful and booming world of the gig economy. This really requires a dedicated episode all of its own, but in a nutshell, what's going to happen is you're going to spend a lot of time on sites like Fiverr, posting job descriptions, reviewing prospective bids, and working with a variety of artists who have absolutely no interest whatsoever in your game and are just looking to make an easy buck so that they can feed their eight kids. Most will turn out to be grossly underqualified to do the work they claim, resulting in some frustrating but frankly also hilarious deliverables which at times will even rival the brilliance of your own earlier efforts. Note that now weeks have gone by and all this time spent acquiring artwork is time that you have been not making your game, so you're probably going to end up wondering why you were even doing this in the first place. But with some luck and perseverance you should eventually end up finding an affordable and not too terrible artist who you can now work with during the coming months to produce a compromised but visually acceptable version of your initial vision. Either that, or you can go back to the drawing board and decide that games were better back in the early days anyway when everything was basically a text-based adventure and make that instead. To help promote the channel and get some feedback, 
I'm giving away five free keys to my Football Manager game on Steam for the first people that comment in the video. So please comment for your free key. Please click subscribe if you like the channel and join me on twitch.tv where I'm regularly doing indie game development and game playthroughs. You can also check out my previous games and current development efforts on my website over at clear.games.com.